delighted to be joined now by Dave and Kevin from redv.net, the St. Helens fanzine. And gents, thank you for joining us. You've got a big game against Leeds on Friday, but you must be pretty confident going into it. Kevin, this kind of feels like this is what St. Helens do now. They play in semi-finals, they win them, and then they play in grand finals. Yeah, the past couple of years, that's that's definitely been the case. And you're right that, that we should be confident going into it. Although Leeds have had a little bit of a hex over us um, in the playoffs over the past couple of years. I don't think we've, we've won one against them for a while to, to finish the season off. Um, but after beating them 40 points to six uh, a couple of weeks ago, if we turn up with the same effort and attitude in this game, then having it at the totally wicked, we should be confident. Dave, how far ahead we, would you have to be for the thoughts of the last 10 minutes against, against Catalans at Magic Weekend to go out of your brain? Because that must be, having seen what happened, that must be a concern in big games. Well, we put a tweet out um, when Catalan scored their consolation try um, to make it 30 points to 18, and then another consolation, and then another one after that. Um, I actually think it's what we needed. Um, it's, it'll stop any complacency coming in into our performances because we thought we had that game won. We should have had that game won. Um, and, the, and the way Catalan came back and won it, that's going to stay fresh in the players' minds. And, and they won't want to have that feeling, that losing feeling again. So it may well have been the best thing that could have possibly happened to us uh, before the end of the season. I, obviously, Leeds... I, they come into this game as underdogs based on the fact that, you know, they've been quite inconsistent this season. But I, there's just something about Leeds finishing fifth in Super League, which I think makes us all a little bit, just pay attention a little bit more because we've been here before, haven't we? We've, we've seen this happen. And, you know, the, if there's probably any club that are going to do it from fifth, it will be Leeds. I think Definitely. we saw the romance in that. Um it, it, it fits the it fits the fairy tale, doesn't it? Um, especially with everything that's been going on this season. I think Leeds have actually beat us six out of eight times when we've met in the playoffs and and, and grand finals. Obviously, we had that big losing run against them at Old Trafford. Um, on paper, Saints should win this game, but that isn't always the case. How big games go, we only have to see how Leeds and Hull KR performed last week in, in upsetting the form book. Um, and we've been upset a couple of times at home this season ourselves against the likes of Castleford. Uh, so we'll be wanting to make sure that doesn't happen this week. I, I suppose, Kevin, from a Saints perspective, you'll look at this and think, you've now been here before. Whereas perhaps if we were having this conversation two, three years ago, we might be saying, well, you know, there might be a bit of almost naivety, a bit of nerves around this kind of game. But the last two years, the Saints have been here. They've, they've learned the kind of muscle memory of winning these kind of games. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly right. The, because we've been there and done it, you're right that we should be going into this full of confidence, knowing what it needs to be done. We've not had a big turnover of, of players in that time as well. So people are coming through, even like when we're, we're bedding youngsters in, like the likes of Lewis Dodd coming in um, and Jack Wells be coming in. They've been either been in the squad, as we'll all remember Jack Wellsby's try at the end of the grand final last year, or they've been around it, Lewis Dodd getting getting ample time with the uh, being like the 18th man. Um, so we have the muscle memory of winning is right. We, we've got that there and we we should be confident. It's Leeds though, isn't it? That is the thing. But, but Dave, if we take the context out of this game, remove what we know about Leeds from fifth, remove what we saw at Magic Weekend. Is there any part of this one game of rugby league that concerns you? Yeah, it's a semi-final uh, and, and things things can and do go wrong. You'd only need um, an early red card if you go back to the grand final where Ben Flower got sent off. You, need a, an, a, you only need an early injury and all of a sudden you can be on the back foot. So, you, you, although on paper and in the form books, Saints are the team to beat in this fixture, you think you, you can't always rely on that. You do still need that bit of luck when it comes to these playoffs. Um, Leeds have earned the right to play us in a semi final, and, and they, they'll also feel that things will, are going in their favour. Um, 
I just hope we, we turn up with the same attitude that we did when we played them a couple of weeks ago because Alex Walmsley on that evening was absolutely unplayable. And, and you feel if Saints pack get on top, then we've got more than enough talent in our backs to, to put a score on. Uh, but equally, Leeds uh, have got that game in the bank last week against Wigan, getting that nil in um, will be really good for their confidence. And they'll bring a big following over as well. And, and it really sets it up nicely to be a really good atmosphere at the Totally Wicked. Kevin, it was pretty horrible for all of us last year watching on TV, obviously with all the games behind closed doors. But I sort of, does, does Friday night feel like a kind of uh, almost a homecoming? I know you've been to plenty of home games this season, but playoff games at the Totally Wicked in front of a packed crowd is sort of what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, under the lights, the atmosphere, as you say, not being at them big games and even being at Wembley this year where there was a, a reduced crowd, just being able to have it as full as we can, um, just everybody, and whether it be Saints fans or Leeds fans, getting behind the team. Yeah, it, it feels like it feels like a big event, uh, and it should be treated like a big event. It's a semi-final. It's winner takes all. Leeds have got nothing to lose. The pressure probably is all on Saints for it. Um, but yeah, it's great to be part of these these big moments, these big games. Uh, Kevin mentioned the Challenge Cup final there. Obviously, Saints are playing to, to win the double. The, the treble is gone because Catalans have won the League Leaders' Shield. Despite that, Saints are still favourites to win Super League, the four to six to win the grand final. Do you feel like your favourites? Does that feel right with how strong Catalans have been this year? I think it's it's too close to call. Um, Saints, obviously, at Magic Weekend, for, for 70 minutes of that fixture, we're in control, but Catalans, if, if we if we do end up getting to the final and playing against them, they've got plenty of players who, who can provide the X factor. Sam Tompkins and Michael McAlorum and the likes, they need no introduction to, to the fans. Um, and, and if they're on form, they're more than capable of, of getting a result for Catalan. And, and it would be a massive result for Super League. So I imagine if, if Saints do get to the final and play against them, it'll be St. Helens against the, the rest of the league in terms of fans inside the stadium. But again, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but that atmosphere at Old Trafford with 70,000 people on that Saturday night, it only seems like two minutes ago since the last grand final where we were actually able to attend. So the hunger to get back there is probably felt just as much amongst the fans as it is the players. Kevin, you've obviously got to play this game against Leeds first and win that, but... If it is Catalans in the grand final and we get a first versus second grand final, is it almost as if there's that many ex-Wigan players in that Catalans team that that adds, that adds an extra level to it? I think it always does. Um, whenever we chat about the Catalan team, um, you mentioned Sam Tompkins, you mentioned Joel Tompkins, you mentioned Michael McAlorum, you, Tom Davis. You're always still looking out for them. Uh, people who say that they don't, I'd say we're lying because you always want to get one over on them. You always want to go one better. And and that probably gives them a little bit of a, of a boost if it was Saints against Catalan, where they're, they're going to turn around and think, you know what, we can get one over on Saints for our for our current club. Um, so it does, it adds a little bit of spice to it. It really does. And Sam Tompkins, he's always been the pantomime villain. He's, he's, Potentially Man of Steel this year. He's, he's probably the most consistent performer, but still love to hate him. Uh, Dave, speaking as a, as a non-Saints fan as I am, I, what is slightly scary about St Helens is that just as it feels like James Roby is starting to come to the end of his career, Kyle Amore has signed on for one more year, McCarthy Scarsbrook, these kind of end of career one year deals and you think that that generation is moving on Lachlan Coote obviously going up steps Lewis Dodd and Jack Wellsby and the, the three or four others really bright young players and it almost just feels like the cycle starts again It does and, and I think that's testament to the, the production line of the club and the, and, and the investment we make in youth and, and bringing players through and I think if you look through the history of Super League all them St. sides that have gone on to, to trophy winning seasons and greatness have been built on local talent. Um, and I think having that success as well, that attracts players to your club. Players may be willing to come to your club for maybe slightly less 
than they would be offered elsewhere because they want to be in a culture where you're going to be tra- challenging for trophies at the end of every season. Um, and I think we've got that winning mentality. I think for a number of years, we, we may have looked at maybe being a bit of the bridesmaids in some of the big games and we've choked on a number of occasions. But since we had Justin Holbrook and then that's been continued by Christian Wolf, that winning mentality is now firmly established back in the club. And, and, he, and you go into games you, with a, an element of confidence now because you, you feel like the players are going to turn up and perform. Right, gents, before I let you go, Kevin, I'm going to come to you first. I want a, I want a prediction. I want a, a result and a margin and a first try scorer from you. Uh, result and margin, right. We'll go because I think it's going to rain on Friday. So I'll go quite low scoring. Um, I'll go 20 points to four. First try scorer at Regan Grace. I'm assuming that's St Helens 20 to four. That's to say, telling, yes. Dave? Now, anybody who knows me knows I don't like to be too confident, so I'm going to go St. Helens 38, Leeds 6. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I'm going to go, I don't even know if he's going to be playing. See on Matauti, a first try scorer, because I've done him all year, and the only time that he's actually come in is the one occasion where I didn't put it on. Well, um, gents, thank you for coming on. The countdown's definitely on to Friday night. I'm sure you guys can't wait, and... Uh, Best of luck on Friday and we'll see what happens, eh? Yeah, cheers. Fingers crossed.